but just to be clear, Dr. Francis, I mean, you have, have never had to go to the emergency room to do this. You've never been required to perform an abortion for, for someone who had complications from taking this, right? So I have actually taken care of women uh, in our emergency room who have come in with complications. That was a failed attempt at a gotcha moment, a killer gotcha moment. She was going to go viral with that. You haven't even had to deal with this. And yet here you are arguing in front of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court heard arguments about the so-called abortion pill. Now, I say so-called abortion pill because it's actually not that simple. I think a lot of people, just like abortion 50 years ago, where people didn't really know the details of what went on in the procedure, they just knew the end result. And I think a lot of people willingly kept themselves ignorant about this because they didn't want to face the reality of what an abortion procedure really was and what really went on to the, the baby that was being destroyed. And it wasn't until pro-life activists actually started pushing this inconvenient truth on America on what the procedure was, what happened to that so-called clump of cells, as it was often described as. And certainly when the description of the procedure of partial birth abortion, late-term abortion was described, I mean, even Democrats, even Democrats like Joe Biden stood up and said that we have to ban that procedure. Well, I think that's exactly what we're experiencing right now with the so-called abortion pill, because the idea is, oh, you're pregnant, you take a pill, and it's over. And that's not at all the reality. And there are a group of doctors who are actually suing the FDA to try to put more precautions into this, but because they're seeing women who are suffering very dire consequences physically, men medically, because of this thing. And right now, they're not even keeping track of the records of this because they want to make it so easy for women to do this in the privacy of their own bedroom without a doctor and without a procedure. Just take the pill and everything will be over. It'll be over. Finally, it'll be over. Yeah, what's over? <laughs> we have to have these inconvenient conversations now. And yesterday, those arguments took place in the Supreme Court. And Caitlin Collins on CNN wanted to have a conversation about it. And I want you to know something about Caitlin Collins before you watch this video. Caitlin Collins' first job in journalism in Washington, D.C. was with the Daily Caller. Tucker Carlson and the team at the Daily Caller hired Caitlin Collins. And if you go back and look at the work she did at the Daily Caller, you would almost believe that she is a conservative. Caitlin Collins is now at CNN. Caitlin Collins now has a very different job. And Caitlin Collins came to this interview. Uh, the woman on your left is a, a gynecologist, a woman, an obstetrician gynecologist who is opposed to the, uh, she's one of the plaintiffs in this case. And on the right is the lawyer for Alliance Defending Freedom, a group that represents women of conscience on issues like this. And well, I want you to watch how this went because Caitlin Collins, she had a list of talking points that were fed to her by pro-abortion activist groups, or just the people who work at CNN. Same thing, really. And watch what happened when Caitlin Collins tried to present her arguments against people who know what the hell they're talking about. Just like visiting a doctor in person before you are essentially induced into labor in your dorm room, we're told that it's safe, that no one has the right to challenge the FDA. And this is the same FDA that told us that opioid safe was opioids were safe to use for chronic pain and that surely no one would get addicted. But is that a fair comparison given, you know, this drug is pretty safe. If you look at the, the actual facts here, it, it, the, the death rate is 0.0005% from someone who uses this drug and has complications. Penicillin is more dangerous than mifeprestone, and that's plenty used in the United States. That's, that's not being argued before the Supreme Court. Caitlin, that's actually not true in the sense of what the FDA's own statistics, no, it's not. What the FDA's own statistics and documents say are that up to 7% of women are gonna have surgical interventions. In just, 2000, or in just 2020, the FDA said that an in-person doctor visit is not only minimally burdensome on a patient, but it's necessary. And they explicitly said that thousands of women are presenting with severe complications as a result of taking this drug. This isn't me saying it, it's what the FDA has said. What they say in court now is very different than what their own data tells you. 
I mean, it's a widely used pill. It's quite safe. But but on the on the not even on that in and of itself, the question was whether or not they have the standing to, to bring this. And doctor, you know, Justice Amy Coney Barrett herself seemed especially skeptical of that. She pointed to to what you had submitted in particular, basically saying that you weren't able to show that that you had suffered the harm to actually bring this case, to have a legal standing to bring it. Do you still think that that she'll ultimately rule on your side in the end of this? Well, you know, I certainly hope that the justices will hear what we have presented, which is that um, those of us, again, who are on the front lines taking care of these women, um, women that have been abandoned by the FDA, women that have been abandoned by those who are giving the abortion drugs, who are not performing any kind of follow up. Those of us who are taking care of them are seeing the harms that women are experiencing. We are seeing it in droves as they come into our emergency rooms. And I hope that the justices heard that today and heard um, the harms that that's causing for us as well. And that really this was the FDA's responsibility to ensure that these high-risk drugs were dispensed in a safe manner. They recognized when they approved these drugs in 2000 that they were high-risk drugs and put into place very common sense safeguards, as Kristen said, were just simply asking for those common sense safeguards that provide ongoing medical care for women who are taking these high risk drugs be reinstated so that women can receive the care that they deserve. I mean, the judges seem very skeptical of the evidence to back that up. We will see what they decide in July. Thank you, Dr. Christina Francis and Christian Wagner for both being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, there's a little bit more of this interview that happened earlier that we're going to play for you, but um, uh, you saw the little mini debate there over how safe these drugs are. And she just kept reiterating, reiterating, Caitlin Collins did, that they're safe. Well, but they're safe. And of course, the lawyer then presented data and facts that shows that these are high risk drugs, actually. Let me tell you something. You remember when they didn't want you to take ivermectin? Remember when they said that, the, oh, it's horse dewormer. You're going to kill yourself if you take that. And yet I assure you that ivermectin is a lot safer for you than these very risky and dangerous so-called abortion pills. But you see, the abortion pills, the my for I'm not good with medical words, myopestrone? Mythopristone. Thank you, Kevin. Mythopristone. Um, the end result of taking this pill is that it terminates a pregnancy. It kills a baby. And it keeps women aborting babies. And because that's what the end result is, they will do whatever they can to ensure that it is widely available. I assure you, way more available than ivermectin ever was during the pandemic. Journalist and uh, broadcaster Amber Duke, formerly Amber Athey, took to the X platform and laid out some facts on this thing in commenting on Caitlin Collins' performance there. The FDA, and here's the thing, because they'll point to all these bullet points. They'll say, oh, but it's very safe. Look, there's hardly any instances of side effects with this drug. I wonder why. The FDA ended requirements for abortion pill providers to report any serious adverse effects related to mifepristone in 2016 five years before they decided to make the abortion pill available via mail order with no in-person doctor visit. In other words, under Barack Obama, as they were leaving power, the FDA ended requirements for doctors to report any kind of negative effects of this pill. Then five years later, they said, well, it looks like there's no negative effects. Let's make it available by mail order. They also used the pandemic to make it available via mail. Because, well, you know, women can't go to their doctors and we can't have them having babies. So let's make it available in the mail. Well, are we sure it's safe? Because when we first agree approved this drug, there were a lot of serious side effects. No, look, we've been looking and it's been years since we had any negative data. Yeah, because in 2016, they stopped requiring doctors to report the negative data. Where was that on Caitlin Collins' fact sheet? Five years before they decided to make abortion pill, an in-person doctor visit. There is simply no available FDA data to indicate taking the abortion pill without a doctor's supervision is safe. But there are plenty of reasons to think that it's not, like ectopic pregnancies being a major example. In other words, if you have an ectopic pregnancy, if you have a pregnancy, you don't know that, by the way. If you find out, you, you go to the store, you get a pregnancy kit, it says that you're pregnant, you're desperate, you're scared, you 
want the abortion pill, you get the abortion pill without ever seeing a doctor. And it turns out you actually have a uh, an ectopic pregnancy, which is a pregnancy in the f- where the where the unborn child is implanted into your fallopian tubes instead of in the uterine wall. If that's the case, you will have a catastrophic result from this pill. Why don't liberals care about that? Why don't they care about women and what might happen to them? And again, these doctors who were in front of the Supreme Court yesterday aren't looking to ban the bill. All they're saying is these women should see a doctor first. They should have an examination before they kill the baby that's inside them. And apparently that's wrong. That's that's an anti-science position to say that you should see a doctor. Amber Duke goes on. Even when the FDA was collecting data, they did a very poor job of it. The point about opioids is important. The FDA has a history of undercounting serious side effects and convincing the public that drugs are safe. To repeat their claims wholesale without a rigorous look at the data is very poor journalism. But I'm not surprised given that most corporate media anchors these days are only good for reading the questions their producers put in the teleprompter and the facts prepared on their segment handouts. And if you think Amber or I are being too hard on Caitlin Collins, well, watch this exchange. When Caitlin Collins asks a question of the OBGYN here, assuming she knew the answer, and it turns out, well, it bites her right in the ass. But just to be clear, Dr. Francis, I mean, you have have never had to go to the emergency room to do this. You've never been required to perform an abortion for, for someone who had complications from taking this, right? So I have actually taken care of women uh, in our emergency room who have come in with complications and and had to do procedures to finish, um, you know, removing the contents of their pregnancy from their uterus. But you know, again, it's the FDA's actions in removing these safeguards that would not give an women an in-person right? visit. I have been brought down. Uh, we're going to watch this again, but I want you to watch something that happens here. Because Caitlin Collins is trying to make the point that, well, you've never had an emergency situation where you've had to have a woman come in and and do an abortion because of complications from the pill. And what the woman is saying, what this doctor is saying, but she's too decent to actually say it out loud, is that, well, the pill killed the baby, but it was such a painful mess inside the, the patient that she had to come into the emergency room and I had to clean out what was left of the baby that has just been killed. That's what she's saying. Now, I want you to watch Caitlin Collins here because her hair looks fabulous, okay? And I'll give her that, honestly. I always want to say something nice about people. And her hair looks fantastic. But if you can look at how her hair is right now, it is purposely styled in such a way where you cannot see her ears. This is a trick that women do on television because who wants to see the communications device that's in your ear that the producer is using to talk to you during an interview? And clearly she asked this question because she thought she asked it in such a way where she thought she knew the answer. Uh, This woman was probably asked, have you ever had to perform an abortion on a woman after they've taken the pill? And the answer was no. Technically, that's not true. It wasn't an abortion. And so now the producer jumps into Caitlin Collins' ears and tells her, oh, no, no, no. Okay, but what she's talking about is not an abortion. So then Caitlin Collins has to like jump in there and say, okay, oh, sure, you had to do some sort of medical procedure, but it wasn't an abortion. Watch how this transpires with Caitlin Collins here. It's such an obvious thing that's happening. Taking this, right? So I have actually taken care of women uh, in our emergency room who have come in with complications and and had to do procedures to finish, um, you know, removing the contents of their pregnancy from their uterus. But you know, again, it's the FDA's actions in removing these safeguards that would not give an women an in right? person <laughs> visit. I have been brought down to the emergency room to complete the process that was started by these abortion drugs, and. Again, this is happening more and more frequently because women are not even receiving in-person medical care prior to receiving these high-risk drugs because of the FDA's decisions. Yeah, you saw it, right? You saw it. I saw it. We all saw it. That was a failed attempt at a gotcha moment, a killer gotcha moment. She was going to go viral with that. You haven't even had to deal with this. And yeah, here you are arguing in front of the Supreme Court. It's going viral, but not for the reasons that Caitlin Collins wanted. But again, the hair looks fabulous, Caitlin. Keep up the great work there. You must be very proud. I'm sure your parents are. 
The reason that we talk about this, the reason that I'm bringing this to your attention is that, listen, in a post Roe v. Wade world, I think we've all realized that no matter what the Supreme Court says, no matter what your elected officials say, no matter what the Supreme Court says in June about the arguments that they just heard yesterday, we have to make a compelling argument to try to change the culture in this country away from thinking that babies are disposable and recognizing and embracing the fact that the babies deserve to live. And that when they are killed in this manner, a little part of our entire culture is killed. And over here on this program, on this platform, we care about women. We care about what women go through with the so-called abortion pill, physically as well as psychologically, emotionally, and mentally. Our friend Mary Margaret Olihan, senior reporter over the Daily Signal, was in front of the Supreme Court yesterday talking to the protesters and the counter-protesters, and she found a woman who has had a personal experience with this drug. They will tell you, the left will tell you, Planned Parenthood will tell you, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and the Democrats will tell you that this is a very sterile experience. You just, you're pregnant, you don't want to have to deal with going to an abortion clinic, or maybe you live in one of those crazy right-wing red states where you don't have easy access to an abortion clinic to kill that baby, that's fine. You just go on the internet, you fill out a form, you click a button, give them money. Oh, don't forget that part. And you'll get a pill in the mail, follow the instructions. It's just like having a period. It'll all be over. Well, that's what they'll tell you. Here's what they won't tell you. And here's what they don't want you to know. The abortion drug was not safe. And it wasn't easy like they told me it was going to be. They said it was going to be like a double period, and that just wasn't true. I'm here because in 2010, I was prescribed the abortion drugs, and I was not prepared for how severe and devastating those those drugs were going to be. And I found myself on the bathroom floor, covered in a pool of blood, wondering if I was going to survive the procedure completely alone until I reached down and lifted out of my body the perfectly formed transparent sack with a recognizable baby inside. And it was so incredibly traumatic. I suffered horrific side effects, not only physical in the moment of the procedure, but to this day, I still suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's something that has followed me since that day. Wow. Now, when you were prescribed these abortion drugs, can you tell us about that experience? How easy was it to get them and um, how how uh, quick was the process? Well, it, it was easy to get them, but I did not receive adequate care. I wasn't given informed consent. I was not given um, adequate follow-up care. Um, they tried to conceal the uh, ultrasound from me until I asked specifically if I could see that. There was a lot of coercion and manipulation involved in receiving this drug. Uh, but the most important thing is that the abortion drug was not safe and it wasn't easy like they told me it was going to be. They said it was going to be like a double period and that just wasn't true. It wasn't true at all. It was very severe and traumatic and very powerful. So how far along were you? I was between six and seven weeks pregnant. And they told you that this would be very simple. It would be like two double periods at the same time? Yeah, they told me it was going to be like a double period. I might feel some cramping, see a little bit of clotting. No one told me that I would hold my child in my hands and would need to decide what to do with that body. I ultimately flushed him down the toilet into the septic tank. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that moment was like when you reached down and found, held the amniotic sac and realized that you were holding your child? No one prepared me that this was even a reality or, or a possibility. Um, so when I held my child, I realized what I had done. And in that moment, the trauma was so severe that now, 14 years later, I relive that moment. I relive the moment of holding that baby covered in blood, terrified, wondering if I'm going to survive, hoping and wishing that I would be able to get out of that situation. Nobody's there to help me. I was completely alone. No American woman, no woman on the planet deserves to do that or to go through that alone. It's it's despicable. And that was 14 years ago. Do you think that 14 years ago when restrictions were more a little tighter on how you could gain access to these drugs now in 2024, do you think women are going through the same ease of access that you were? Well, you're right. There were restrictions in place when I received my abortion. And even still, I did not receive 
the care that I was legally entitled to, such as follow-up care or a follow-up doctor's visit or a follow-up ultrasound. So imagine now with no restrictions in place, what is a woman going to experience without any of that care? I cannot imagine how terrifying that must be for women and how many women are finding themselves in that same place on the bathroom floor covered in blood, wondering if they're going to die. Now, can you share with us, Elizabeth, have you had any mental or physical side effects of that chemical abortion 14 years ago? Unfortunately, yes. I suffered from an eating disorder. I do have post-traumatic stress disorder, um, depression. The side effects are very, very deep and far-reaching, and it's something that I had to find um, professional counseling to help me get through, and, and I'm still dealing with it. So this isn't something that's safe like a Tylenol. This is something that will follow women for the rest of their lives. Now, what do pro-abortion advocates say to you when you share your story? I've heard lots of things, right? But the, the, main, the main point is that no matter what they say and no matter what their reaction is, the truth is the truth. And this drug was devastating and it nearly killed me and it, and it hurt me. So whatever their reaction, I'm here to tell the truth. All right. And then why are you here today at the United States Supreme Court? I'm here today at the U.S. Supreme Court because I want the FDA to do its job. I want them to keep women safe. That's what they're here for, and they're being negligent, and they need to be held accountable for what they did to me and what they do to women everywhere. Uh, for many Christians, this is Holy Week. Tomorrow's going to be Holy Thursday, the uh, acknowledgement and celebration of the Last Supper. Uh, Friday is Good Friday, and then Sunday we uh, celebrate pretty important moment in world history with the resurrection on Easter Sunday. It's a good time to say some prayers about where we are right now and where we're headed.